Hi and welcome everyone. I'm Tim Atricon and I'll be presenting our work Statistical Comparison of Algorithm Performance Through Instance Selection. This is a joint work between the library at Bordeaux and the LIACS at Leiden University. Our work focuses on tackling the following problem, which arises naturally in many situations. It's the problem of comparing the performances of two algorithms on a set of instances. We have well, the first algorithm, which is the incumbent. It's typically some well-known algorithm, which we already have data about it. And then there's the challenger, which is seen as a black box, so we have no data about it. To do this comparison, what we would naturally do is run the challenger on all of the instances to compare it with the data of the incumbent. But this is quite costly. Instead, we can hunt pick or select randomly some instances and then run the challenger on that subset of instances. This would enable us to, to do the comparison at reduced cost, but with reduced accuracy. In a work, we propose to tackle this problem in a principled manner and offer a ready-to-use toolbox. So we have the incumbent algorithm and the challenger algorithm that we plug in uh, into our method, uh, but actually we don't exactly plug that. We plug background data, um, we add the increment running time to the background data. Uh, that background data contains uh, features, uh, which is often easily computable and is often used in either our algorithm selection or uh, uh, configuration algorithms. Then we also have um, runtime data of other algorithms, uh, which is also available um, because uh, we it is often the case that uh, when we want to do a comparison like that, there's uh, a, a competition and we can use uh, the competition data as background data. We have two objectives. Uh, when we answer that question is that we want to minimize the cost, that is we want to minimize the CPU time used to answer this question. And we want to maximize the accuracy, uh, that is uh, the accuracy of a prediction of which of the two algorithms is the best on our full set of instances. We have uh, to solve this problem a high level strategy, which is uh, an iterative uh, process. Uh, so first we, uh, we have some initialization where we compute for uh, each instance their score. Then while the confidence is less than uh, our desired threshold, uh, what we are going to do is pick up pick one instance, so the best instance according to score. Uh, we will run the challenger on that instance, so now we have the runtime data of a challenger on that instance, so we can update uh, our confidence and uh, recompute the score for each of the remaining instances. Um, and then we repeat uh, this process and we return the best performing algorithm. No, there are two elements that are not clearly defined, which are the score and the confidence. I'm going to explain them. First, the score. The scores is used to select the best instance to run the challenger on. As such, it should reflect the two objectives that we want to have. An instance should have a high score if it has a high discriminatory power of being able to discriminate between the challenger and the incumbent. But it should also have a high score if it only comes at a low cost. That is the trade-off between the cost and the discriminatory power of the instance. This is for the first component. For the second component, the confidence. It translates the state of the algorithm and it's also the stopping condition that we are using. It's an estimation of the accuracy of our current prediction. Here are our scoring confidence methods. Um, for the instance scores, uh, we have the baseline method, um, which is random. It's basically selecting a random instance that's not already been run. Then we have the idea that um, with the run times of other algorithms, we can discriminate uh, between instances uh, based on um, the runtime on that runtime data. Um, so the first idea is uh, to base this 
on um, on the variance of uh, the runtime data, and this only accounts for the discrimination power. So we also have to take into account uh, the cost um, of of running an instance. Uh, so that's why we divide by the expected running time. Uh, we have a kind of similar method, which is based, the discrimination-based method, uh, based on the work of Chen et al. Um, uh, basically, they use um, a domination uh, discrimination power, uh, and instead of looking at all the um, the gap between the run times, uh, they just look at the gaps between the best algorithm and instance and the other instances. And we also adapted uh, the metric by dividing uh, by the expected running time. And then we have um, other kind of methods. Uh, the information-based method is based on, um, uh, on the idea that the variance is a proxy of the information gained, and uh, it makes a bit more uh, a few more assumptions. Um, first, that um, actually the, the, the time distribution, uh, the runtime distribution on an instance follows a certain kind of distribution. Uh, so it's a kind of a probabilistic view. And um, since we have, uh, we can express um, the total, uh, the sum of uh, runtime of the challenger algorithm as a random variable. We can measure the information gained uh, knowing uh, one more element than before, and that's what we measure for all possible uh, run times on on that instance. Uh, we measure uh, the information gained, um, so that's why we have an expectation of information gained, and then we also divide by uh, the expected cost. So so that's a, a kind of probabilistic view. And then we have the feature-based view, um, which is uh, a bit different from the others because it tries to take into account that maybe the run times between instances are correlated and they are correlated based on uh, these feature vectors. Um, so what we have with these features of each instance, um, we can create some distance metric. And then uh, with this distance metric, we have a, a measure of similarity between instances. And the idea is that uh, we do not want to run an instance that's close to instances that are already been run. Thus, we want to choose the instance that's furthest from any other instance that's already been run. So that's like the amount of information uh, it brings about. And also, um, an instance that's close to many other instances, but that's not already, uh, and all of these instances are not already been run, is going to bring you a lot more information uh, because there's a lot of instances that are very similar to this one. And then we have the confidence methods. Uh, the baseline is that we have fixed sized uh, subset. That means that we have uh, a confidence of zero until we reach the fixed size. Then we have a confidence of 100%. Then uh, we have the Wilkerson-based method, uh, which is inspired from uh, racing algorithms uh, developed by Biratari. Um, and um, it's a statistical test. Then we have the distribution-based method. It's uh, it's a bit like the information-based method in the sense that we assume that we have uh, uh, some specific kind of distribution for the running times. Then we can add them and have some uh, total distribution of the running time that is the sum uh, for the instances that are um, not run. And for the instances that are run, we already have data. So this is only a constant, and this part is a random variable. And then it's simply uh, computing the probability of uh, the difference between uh, the incumbent and challenger total time being less or equal than zero. That translates that the total time of the challenger is less than uh, the incumbent, thus the challenger is better. So now let's present our evaluation protocol. We considered four data sets, uh, all from competitions. Uh, so we created the SAT 2020 data set from the competition of the same name, and we took three uh, ASLIP data sets. 
um, one which is CSP Minizing, uh, Bayesian Network Structural Learning, and the SAT 2018 competition. We will consider all ordered pairs of algorithms in a dataset. So that means that each algorithm uh, takes turns being the challenger, and then it takes another turn as being the incumbent. And then for each dataset, we will report the percentage of CPU time used. So how do we compute that? We compute that as the ratio of the time spent running the challenger algorithm on, on the instances divided by the time it would take to run the challenger on all of the instances. And then we report the percentage of accuracy, that means the percentage of time or method was right in the comparison. So first, we're wondering if uh, all methods or 15 methods uh, can help reduce the CPU time used for the comparison between any two algorithms uh, on a dataset. Uh, so first I'm going to show you the result for CSP Minizing, uh, where we decided to stop at a 95% confidence level, which seems to be um, an accurate threshold uh, to have accurate results, but uh, without a, a high cost. Uh, remember, we have two objectives. We want to minimize the cost, that is, we want to minimize the time, and we want to maximize the, the accuracy, so we want ideally to be in the top left corner. We are mostly interested in Pareto front. Uh, here, where we see that uh, the best performing methods uh, for the discrimination seem to be Wilcoxon, uh, here, here, and the distribution based method. Here, while the subset uh, method seems to be underperforming, and um, most of the selection methods seem to be performing pretty well. Um, what does it mean for CSP minizing that, on average, if we were to compare a 95% accuracy, so one of the two points here, we could do it in only using um, an average less than 10% of the total time it would take to run the full comparison. So that means that we can save a lot of times and do 10 times as much comparison. Um, so let's see our results, uh, same experiment, but on the SAT 2020 dataset. Um, so the shape of a Pareto front is a bit different where we have a distribution-based method which are underestimating their confidence, so that's why they stop uh, later and they use at least twice as much time as the Wilcoxon based methods. We clearly see a bit of a difference between uh, the Wilcoxon and distribution based, where Wilcoxon seems to be outperform the distribution based discrimination method. Uh, all of these are near the uh, desired uh, accuracy level that we asked for, that is at 95%. And uh, the selection method that seems to perform well here are information-based, random, and variance-based. Again, we can see that in less than 10% of the time, we can do the accurate comparison. Uh, so again, we can save a lot of time. But is that really the use case that we described um, at the beginning? Well, we want to compare our algorithm to the state of the art, and that there's not only the state of the art uh, algorithm in, in those data sets. Uh, when we plot uh, the total runtime of uh, the algorithm and here there are ranks, so here's the best algorithm and here the last, we can clearly see that it's very easy to compare uh, the first one, the state of the art here with uh, the last one because uh, I mean, they use twice as much time and even this, uh, this group of algorithm to this group of algorithm, they use 20% uh, more time, uh, which is uh, quite significant. So instead, um, we want to see how methods perform when we only consider uh, top ranking algorithms. Uh, so that's what we are going to see. Uh, so on the left, there's the, it's an exact uh, copy of the last figure to be able to compare, but with a different scale for the accuracy. And here, where we only kept uh, the term 10 algorithm for SAT20 dataset. So here there's more than 60 algorithm, here there's only uh, 10, so there's less data, uh, so there's less background data, which means that the methods that are based on that uh, suffer a bit uh, in terms of performance, but explain partly why information-based and variance-based seems uh, to overestimate their confidence. Uh, the random-based method seems to be um, 
at the exact right uh, threshold, near 95% of accuracy. And we see that the distribution base is, uh, again, underestimating its confidence and stopping uh, too late. So even on top ranking data set, we can still save more than 60% of the time while still being pretty accurate, um, which means uh, it's great. But so far, what we've seen is when we stopped at, 90, at a confidence level of 95%, um, but how does our selection method fare when, when we want another confidence level? So that's what we're going to see is that we're going to plot all of the selection method, the accuracy, with respect to the time, but we don't stop the me all methods. And we only plot for Wilcoxon is uh, the best discrimination method, as we've seen. Um, okay, so what do we see in these figures? Uh, both for top 10 and sat 20, feature-based method is underperforming. Uh, we have similar trends in terms of random. Uh, it's performing as well as the other at the beginning until a certain threshold uh, here and here. Then uh, of more fancy methods, uh, information-based and variance-based, for example, uh, would perform it. Uh, here and here, and, and then at the end, uh, they, they reach a very similar performance. So if we remember, uh, for SAT20, random stopped at 10% of the time. So actually, we hit a nice spot uh, for random, so that white had a very good results. And if, if we go a bit further in confidence, uh, the results are not as good, but still pretty great. Um, and the difference between all more fancy methods and random can be uh, partly explained um, because uh, for SAT20, at least a third of the instance of uh, a median time, which can correspond to the uh, cutoff time. And uh, that all fancy methods, uh, try to avoid uh, those instances, which brings about no information, uh, whereas random will just only, uh, will select them randomly, uh, disregarding that fact. Uh, so, so that's why uh, they have a bit of an edge. So we've seen so far that we can compile the random subset, that, which leads to faster results. And even with uh, a statistical test, we, have, we can have confidence in, in that result. And we can do so optimally by selecting instance with low running time and high discrimination power, which means that uh, we have great results which can uh, enable to do faster development and lot uh, more experimentation or with lower costs, uh, and maybe in the future uh, competitions. And we could also use uh, for algorithm configuration. And we also provide a toolbox, so that means that even you, when considering top ranking algorithm, you can use our software um, to save 60% of the time if you are doing uh, that on, on SAT20. So here's the uh, repository for our toolbox with all of the interaction. Thank you for uh, listening. If you have any question, feel free to uh, send me a mail or uh, send a message in the chat.